Okay, so we're going to start a brief series on Formit. Um, basically, you do your first 10%, maybe 5% design process as you are doing site analysis and site investigation. This is going to assume that you know little to nothing about Formit, so we'll do a little bit of an introduction with things and dive into it. Okay, so first, Formit is a 3D workspace. Um, it is sort of a planar based modeling. In other words, you, you draw lines, you connect lines together to form planes, you begin pushing and pulling those planes to make solid looking objects built up of planes. Okay, so we'll, we'll dive into that as we go along and do some basic modeling tutorials. But for right now, we're going to start with finding a site. And as usual, I've asked my students to come up with creative sites. Um, one of the students yelled out the Himalayas, and so that seemed like a fun thing to do. So navigated to the Himalayas, and you know I like to start just by using Google Earth, right, and just explore, find some interesting locations. And I have no idea where I'm exactly at in the Himalayas, but I found this uh, what looks to be a pretty amazing looking temple um, in Nepal, and it has some interesting openings right here below it on this cliffside. And thought, wow, wouldn't that be a neat spot to do a small house, tiny house kind of thing. Um, so this is the site that I want to import. Um, first tricky thing is, you know, there's no real address to this location. Um, so your typical format search is not going to work. But what I can do from Google Earth is if you look right down here at the bottom right, is I do have my latitude and longitude, which is totally searchable inside of format. So... Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to just think, well, I'm going to put in an address in the States. This is going to be a slightly different look at it um, because sometimes you don't have an address. Um, but we can always go to latitude and longitude. So point one, informant, you know, diving into using Google Earth, um, exploring the site a little bit this way. Uh, and you will find uh, the difference between Google Earth and what you're going to see in Formant. Google Earth typically has a little bit better more recent satellite photographs that it's using as the terrain uh, to generate the terrain. So, you know, you want to pay attention to the difference in some of these things. So that said, let's go into format, click. Um, very typical 3D modeling um, navigation inside of format. So um, left mouse button is going to activate, um, select, um, activate commands, those kind of things. The wheel is going to zoom in and out. Holding the wheel is going to pan. The right button is going to orbit. So a little bit different maybe than what you're used to in Revit, um, AutoCAD, few things, but um, very standard configuration that once you have it locked in your head, it's pretty easy to do. So I'm going to start by um, finding my location. Uh, and this doesn't only set... Um, a satellite image, but also now grabs my terrain, um, my latitude and longitude for uh, sun settings, and also uh, it is going to grab um, my weather data um, from the localized weather stations in, in the areas. So to type in latitude and longitude, I'm just going to type in 28, comma, 14, comma, 23 north by 83 degrees, 59 feet, and 46. I think it's referred to as minutes, but I don't really know. Uh, I don't remember. Um, sorry. Um, but 40, 46, the, the symbol is inches, but I believe it is minutes, something like that. East, uh, and let's hit enter. And I know that that's not right. What did I do wrong here? It might be the commas. Let's just take the commas out here really quick. I think it's just spaces. Because that's definitely not the Himalayas. And, you know, sometimes with the videos, it's fun to make mistakes. Not on purpose, but, you know, I make mistakes. It's all good. Yeah, there we go. Himalayas. Same thing. Right, um, same location. We can actually see that temple right here. I usually like to identify um, a building that, you know, okay, that little blue square is pretty prominent. So if I drop back into Google Earth, let's see if I can't find that. 
Yeah, and there it is right there. So yeah, I know I've got the same spot, same location. So I'm feeling really confident about that. Other than the fact that, you know, I typed it in the wrong way the first time. So no commas. 28, 14, 23 North, 83, 59, 46 East is that location. I'm going to import satellite image and terrain. I, I need both of these. I'm going to set my origin close to my site. So the green and red X, that's going to give me my the location of my 0, 0, 0 point. Um, well, I should say my X and Y point. Um, it's not going to set my Z height here at the origin. Wish it would, but it doesn't. Um, so let's zoom out just a little bit. The further I zoom in, you know, the more, uh, I shouldn't say detail, but you know, the, the, the closer I am to the site, there is sort of a, a fine tuning method of this, right? If I zoom way out like this, I am going to get more area, but I am not going to get as dense of a mesh for the area. So I'm not going to get as accurate of data. So there's a little bit of fine tuning to do on grabbing these sites. Um, in other words, the further out I get, I still have the exact same number of polygons. Um, so, you know, I, I typically try and set it something at the block level or a little bit below. Or if I'm, I'm in the Himalayas, you know, how much do I want? I really want the fall off of this right here. And hopefully that's going to give me pretty good data. So I'm going to click Finish Importing. And this gives me a flattened version of my satellite image. And if I look right here on my layers, and if you are not seeing layers, by the way, you can go to Window and turn on the Layers button right here. Um, I can turn off the satellite image and turn on the terrain, and that will give me the 3D version of the mesh. And you can see it's not super high def, right? I can even see sort of the triangulation, but it is pretty darn close in terms of a really excellent starting point. Um, unless I have the money to go out and hire a survey and crew, which early on in a project or on any academic project, we just don't have that kind of time, that kind of money, right? So this is a great starting point. This is an amazing thing to be able to use and have. So given this, it's a great time for me to go ahead and let's do a quick file, save as, save sketch as. Uh, I'm working locally. This is not the online version or the browser version of format, but the local version. So I'm going to save this locally. And let's just name this uh, site one, arc222, save. And that's going to save it directly to my desktop. So let's go back into the location really quickly and let's look at some additional things. Um, weather data, these little symbols will represent weather stations that are close. So if I zoom out here a little bit, sometimes you will be lucky enough to find a weather station that is immediately adjacent to your site. Um, other times, not so much. So I'm just making sure that I'm seeing the data in uh, English here. And I should see some weather data. I checked this earlier, uh, and it did pop right up. So I'm not 100% sure why those little cloud things aren't popping up on my map. There we go. There's my first one. Ah, there we go. I took took a minute to find them, um, and I'm not sure why, but um, I, I have a whole series of weather stations now, and we are in you know, obviously really wild terrain. So understanding that this weather station data is going to vary from this weather station data is really important. So you need to look at your location. Just picking the closest might not always give you the right kind of data as we're working through this. Um, that said, I'm, you know, I'm closest to this kind of edge, really similar exposure, although I know this is a slightly higher elevation than this location, this is probably the right weather data to choose. Okay, So I'm going to click on that, and that connects this weather data with my location, which is going to be relevant for simulation here in a minute, but it also gives me um, some key things. Temperatures right here, and then if I scroll down, the annual wind, wind rose, which I have always thought, you know, for most climates is moot. It's not really important data. Um, that is my annual averages. I'm much more interested in what is happening with wind in more extreme conditions. 
So December, February, um, clearly my wind is coming predominantly out of the north. Um, it is not particularly extreme wind, right? So I'm looking at these blues as they relate to speed. There's nothing in this, you know, 25 mile per hour plus range. Most everything is in the 15 to 20 mile per hour range. And that is almost all of the wind, right? It's coming from the north to the south, uh, unless there is very little to no rain, no wind. Which we're getting into these darker blues right here, which are coming from the south. So we can, you know read this and surmise that um, December through February, March through May, um, our wind is very low, you know, 20 mile per hour or less, coming predominantly out of the north. Then uh, June through August, very low wind speeds altogether at this elevation in this location. Um, and randomized, right? Um, very, very low wind speeds. Almost everything's the darker blues. So really important information to have as we move along. Last thing that we're going to take a look at right here is we have the basics of this sort of established, our terrain, um, our location. We have our latitude and longitude. We have our weather station data. Let's take a quick look at sun data for this location. And to do this, it's easiest to visualize if I go back to the flat version. Um, I'm going to use the pencil tool right here to draw a really basic box starting at the origin. Let's just do a 10 by 10 box. Or I should say plane, ground plane. And then I'm going to extrude that up 30 feet. And that basically is going to give us something to see shadows with. I can turn on the sun and the sun editor, and this will let me see um, the sun location and it will let me see the time of year. Um, and I can do that, you know, I can either move the sun around like that, or um, I typically find it a little bit more convenient to sort of use the sliders right here. And you can see it's a little tricky to see right here, but I can see the shadow on the ground plane. I can adjust the time of year. Um, and see the impact, the immediate impact this also has in terms of shadows as the sun is dipping way far to the south in this location. Cool, so super, super convenient, super easy to use um, as we are building our site analysis data.